We're going to talk about hormones today, male hormones in particular. So I'm just going to call this uh, little teaching sequence, and I'm not real sure how many um, that we'll do, but testosterone, a male hormone primer. Why is it important? The importance of testosterone. I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens in middle-aged, uh, in aged men. I'll talk a little bit about why uh, it is low and what are the misconceptions. We have tons of misconceptions today about testosterone, male hormones, and we have um, a, a great misunderstanding, I think, in the, in the medical community. Uh, testosterone is evil, testosterone is bad. I would like to bring some balance to that whole sequence of thinking um, because I believe that testosterone plays a huge role, as I'll discuss here today. Importance. Number one, lean bone, uh, lean muscle mass and bone. Um, testosterone is an anabolic steroid hormone. One of its precursors is DHEA. So DHEA is converted to testosterone eventually through a hormonal cascade. By the way, your body manufactures all the hormones that you need. You don't just hit a point in the day and your body says, give me this. There's a feedback loop. Back to the pituitary. Pituitary via a follicle stimulating um, hormone, luteinizing hormone rather, um, dictate to the lytic cells in the, in the testes as to what the production should be. Increase production. But we get lost in the sauce, we lose a lot of our testosterone due to numerous reasons which we'll discuss. Number one, bone mass. Bone mass is men age critical. Testosterone's role is huge. Lean muscle mass, huge. Um, loss of lean muscle mass and the role of testosterone, huge. Increase in adipose or fat tissue and the loss of lean muscle, huge components. It has an effect on our psyche, our emotions, our confidence. So what we find in men is that the lower their testosterone is, it affects your confidence levels, it affects your outlook, it affects your sense of well-being. Very, very critical for us to understand the role of testosterone. Your question at this point might be, well, don't I have enough? What's the problem? Should I have it tested? Why is it low? We'll cover this um, as we go. The other area that we typically understand and see, um, we, we, we think it's all about re reproduction um, and libido and sex drive. And I would say to you that it is much, much more. Testosterone's role in human health and physiology goes way beyond sex drive, libido, uh, reproduction. It's critically important in all of those. I'm here to talk to you today about your sense of well-being, everything from your emotions, psychological, psychological, to your physical, to your circulatory, to your cardiovascular. You'll see. My points um, will be made as we go on. And, I, and again, I say there could be about a series of three of these just from a time standpoint that we try to do. Quick review. Bone, lean muscle mass, emotions, psyche, sense of well-being, reproduction, sex drive, libido. Is it all about that? No. We're going well beyond that. The next area that I'd like to talk about um, that is a strong link uh, for men's health is low testosterone is associated with changes in lipids, your cholesterol. Uh, we see rising rates of um, triglycerides, lowering of HDLs, increasing of lipoprotein A, reduction or in testosterone equates to an increase in fibrin, of fibrin formation. In other words, as part of our clotting mechanism, we need to have fibrin. Too much fibrin or fibrinogen is not good. Adequate levels of testosterone have fibrinolytic activities, lytic lysis breaking down fibrin. So if testosterone is low in a man, his blood has a tendency to be more coagulative via elevated fibrinogen levels. Testosterone affects your triglycerides, your LDLs, your HDLs, your clot, not your technically your clotting factor mechanisms, but indirectly through fibrinogen. Testosterone, inadequate levels of testosterone affect the heart of a man. It improves endothelial dysfunction. Think of the lining of your artery walls, your vasculature, the internal lining. Um, to adequate levels of testosterone reduce the amount of endothelial dysfunction 
or trauma that occurs on the lining of the endothelium. Now, I want to warn you that many of the things that I talk about here today are not discussed in the traditional medical community, are highly misunderstood. I'm, I'm bringing to you facts that are completely overlooked. I'll get into, though, what the misconceptions are and how we get into this conundrum of having lower testosterone in men as well. Antifibrinolytic activities I've mentioned, increasing circulatory capacity with adequate levels of testosterone. Actually, there are some studies on the books that have shown that men with lower testosterone levels and congestive heart failure, you could improve their heart failure situations and conditions by raising their levels of testosterone. Let's move forward. Middle-aged men, increasing rates of heart disease, increasing rates of hypertension, increasing rates of type 2 diabetes, increasing rates of, of complications related to insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes formation, all linked to directly, I have multiple articles, I have folders folks, and, and I, in this type of a teaching format, maybe eventually what I'd like to do is have some of this documented in a format that then you can go back and look at the reference information. But I have oodles of information that document what I'm talking to you about here today. This is not an opinion. This is not just conjecture. Um, but I don't want to bore you with the details and turn this into an hour-long teaching. I, I want it to be concise, have meaning. Um, but we're going to figure out a way with our staff as to how we can uh, maybe give you some of the background literature to what I'm talking about. Let's move on. Middle-aged men, higher rates of high blood pressure, higher rates of type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, we call it metabolic syndrome. Men's HDLs drop, as mentioned, their triglycerides go up, they gain a paunch, they become more sedentary, they're more fatigued, they're tired, all very much related to low testosterone. This eventually encourages atherogenesis, the beginning of atherosclerosis. I mentioned at the beginning, osteoporosis, bone health, we also know that depression is related to lowered free testosterone levels. Now we're getting a little technical. We'll talk a little bit maybe in the next teaching about uh, total testosterone, free testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, estradiol. Do I want to confuse you? No. Do I want to impress you? Certainly not. Do I want to educate you and teach you? Yes. I don't need you to become a biochemist. I don't need you to have a, an incredible grip on uh, chemistry, the body's chemistry, but what I do need you to understand that, that there are specific parameters that we have to certainly evaluate. Depression linked to uh, lower rates of free testosterone, and we know that, as I mentioned before, indirectly mentioned, it has an anti-ischemic effect. Ischemia means um, lack of blood flow through the arterial walls, through the arterial beds, um, that um, can diminish blood flow to parts of the body, in particular to the heart. And there's literature pieces that show that when a man's testosterone levels and free testosterone levels are low, we have more ischemia when they're higher. And that's because of that um, endothelial dysfunction, lining of the artery walls, the artery beds. The healthier the artery beds are, the better the blood flow. So you have an anti-ischemic. Ischemia means lack of oxygen to tissue. The heart would be the most critically involved. Now, let me caution you. I'm not a cardiologist. I'm not saying that congestive heart failure and heart disease is solely the, uh, responsible to testosterone. But I, I, I can document to you numerous articles, Journal of Andrology, uh, Endocrine Journals, etc., that link these two very, 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 very closely. Let's move on to why is it low as we close um, this little teaching format. Um, environmental chemicals, phthalates, bisphenol A, to name a few, being overweight, obese, stress, high cortisol, all of these tie. I want to thank you for uh, listening in to Joe DiMatteo. By the way, I had not mentioned at the beginning, Ask the Pharmacist radio broadcast. Uh, my background as a pharmacist, board certified in clinical nutrition, doctor of naturopathy uh, degree do a daily broadcast, actually do a broadcast six days a week. 
uh, go to our website at askjoedematteo.com. Uh, I hope this little portion has been informative. Stay tuned. I'm not real sure what we're going to call this. A male hormone primer. Understanding male hormones. If you're a man and you're having issues, stay tuned for part two. Thanks for being with us.